everyone. Thank you so much for joining my video where today we are solving quadratic equations by completing the square. These are going to be pretty nice problems for us. They get a little bit more complex for sure in Algebra 2, but in Algebra 1, we're going to start off with some really nice problems to get our solution. Now, just so we know, completing the square is just one of the other strategies that you can use to solve a quadratic equation. You can graph a quadratic equation to find the solutions. You can factor a quadratic equation. You can also use the quadratic formula. So the completing the square is just one of those four strategies that you can use. Um, it works really well, especially if you are very comfortable with perfect square trinomials. I'm going to give you a brief update to remind you how to create a perfect square trinomial because we need to do that in order to do this process. So follow along with me. Feel free to pause, rewatch things, Take pencil and paper out, dry erase board, whiteboard, whatever you might need. So first we need to make sure we really understand a perfect square trinomial. Perfect square trinomial, once we see it, can be factored as the square root of the first term, the square root of the last term, and the sine of the middle term. So x squared plus 8x plus 16 is a perfect square trinomial because when I square it, when I square x plus 4 and I... Okay, x squared plus 8x plus 16 is a perfect square trinomial because when I take the square root of the first term, it's x. The square root of my last term is 4. And then if I was to multiply these two terms together and double it, I would get my middle term. So I know it's a perfect square trinomial. Now, even though this trinomial gets factored in this way, what we really need to make sure we know is that x plus 4 squared really means that it's x plus 4 times x plus 4. A trinomial is really the area of that whole square. So x plus 4 times x plus 4 would bring us back to that trinomial, which is really the area of the square. Now, making sure we can create a perfect square trinomial. So if I gave you this one and I said x squared plus 10x plus what? What number would make it a perfect square trinomial? Well, think about the connection between 8 and 16. Now, you might say, oh, well, it's half of it. But think about this 4 in between. How do you go from an 8 to a 4? You would divide it by 2. How do you go from 4 to 16? You would square it. So if I gave you x squared plus 10x, half of 10 is 5. And then 5 squared is 25. This would become a perfect trinomial that would get factored as x plus 5 squared. So we first need to make sure we can create a perfect square trinomial. So what we are doing is we are taking half of the value of b, and then we're squaring it to make our c. So let's do some practice problems of this skill. Here it says determine the value of c that creates a perfect square trinomial and factor it. So x squared plus 14x plus what number? So look at 14. Half of 14 is 7, and then we square it. 7 squared is 49. This would be a perfect square trinomial, and its factored form is x plus 7 squared. Half of negative 20 is negative 10. Negative 10 squared is 100. This would be factored as x minus 10 squared. Remember, it's the square root of the first term, square root of my last term, and then always the sign of the middle term. Half of 12 is 6. 6 squared is 36. This factor would be x plus 6 squared. Half of negative 16 is negative 8. Negative 8 squared is 64. This factor would be x minus 8 squared. Half of 8 is 4. 4 squared is 16. This factored would be x plus 4 squared. Half of negative 40 is negative 20. Negative 20 squared would be positive 400. Notice every time we keep squaring, whether it's positive or negative, when you square something, it always becomes positive. This would become x minus 20 squared. Half of 7 is 3 and a half. 3 and a half squared is 12.25, or you can always keep it in fraction form. And so this factor would be x plus 3.5 squared. Notice the value that's always in our binomial is simply half of that b value. Half of negative 40 is negative 20. Half of 7 is 3.5. So here, half of negative 5 is negative 2.5. Negative 2.5 squared is positive 6.25. And that's our factored form, x minus 2.5. Now for fractions. Half of a half is 1 fourth. 1 fourth squared would be 1 16th. So we could also keep fractions in our answer. This would be x plus 1 fourth squared. Half of 1 third is 1 sixth. 
1 6th squared is 1 36th. This becomes x minus 1 6th squared. Okay. Now let's take a look at actually this process of completing the square. All right, completing the square. So we had to go through all the practice about a perfect square trinomial because we need that in order to go forward. Now we're going to purposely create perfect square trinomials. If you watch my video on converting vertex form to standard form and then standard form to vertex form, that's all about purposely creating a perfect square trinomial, which you really need to make sure you follow me on and we're going to use the skill we just used in order to go forward. So we're going to purposely isolate the first two terms of our trinomial from C. We're going to make it just the x squared plus the bx value. We're going to then, part two, determine the value of c that creates a perfect square trinomial. But not only do we figure out what c should be, we're going to actually add it onto both sides of the equation. Once we have a perfect square trinomial, then we're, going to, we're then going to factor it, just like we did practice. And then we're going to learn that in order to take, uh, to solve a perfect square trinomial that's already in that squared form, in order to undo the squared, we need to take the square root. It's the opposite operation. And we're going to have to take into account the positive and the negative roots and then actually solve for x. So pretty complicated what it sounds like right now. And I know I just kind of covered up my directions, but I'm going to guide you through the best I possibly can. So first of all, x squared plus 10x minus 11 equals 0. Look at that trinomial, x squared plus 10x minus 11. We can definitely agree that's not a perfect square trinomial. So the first step into starting to make this become a perfect square trinomial on purpose is to get the x squared plus 10x to be by itself. So in order for this part to be by itself, we need to get rid of the negative 11. The way we get rid of a negative 11 is we add 11. And so our equation looks like this. And up until this point, we've spent so much time setting equations equal to zero. Now we're basically doing the opposite. We're purposely getting our c value to be on the other side of the equation. And now take a look at what happens next. x squared plus 10x. Now we have to think what number would make this a value of c? What number for c would make this a perfect squared trinomial? Now take a look. We actually did this right here x squared plus 10x plus 25. 25 would purposely make this a perfect square trinomial. So if I look at this equation and I say, okay, well, imagine there was a 25 on this side of the equation. Imagine I added that in. But we know when we have an equation, whatever we do to one side of the equation, we must do to the other side. So I purposely am creating a perfect square trinomial, but if I add 25 on the left, I need to make sure I add 25 on the right. So now this new equation becomes x squared plus 10x plus 25 equals 36. Okay, remember how this is a perfect square trinomial and we already figured out how we're supposed to factor it? That this x squared plus 10x plus 25 is this factored. So we know this perfect square trinomial is x plus 5 squared and now it equals 36. Okay, here's where we put in a brand new step that we haven't used before. The way to undo our squared is to do our square root. If we do a square root on one side of the equation, we have to do it to the other. So the square root of x plus 5 squared is going to be equal to the positive and negative square root of 36. Now, it's really, really important to add in that positive and negative sign because think about this for a moment. Whatever answer I get in here for x, x plus 5, and I square it, the answer will always be positive. But I could have two different values for x here. I could have one value for x that adds up to get 6, because when I square a 6, I get 36. But I could also have another x value that makes this expression here become negative 6. And what's negative 6 squared? Positive 36. So I need to account for the positive and negative values when I'm doing this problem. Now, the beauty of taking the square root on both sides is that the square root and the squared operations, they're opposite operations, so they undo each other. So I'm really left with x plus 5 equals plus or minus, and the square root of 36 is just 6. Now to get x by itself, because that's what we're solving for, I need to subtract 5. Notice when I subtract 5, I'm actually going to put it in front of my expression. Um, you don't have to do it in this method, but I do all of my problems in this order. And now I use the plus sign to get my first solution. I use the minus sign to get my second solution. Negative 5 plus 6. Use the addition first. Negative 5 plus 6 is a positive 1. And then to get my second solution, negative 5 minus 6, 
is a negative 11. And these are actually our two solutions. If I was to plug both of these numbers back in here, it's going to equal 36. 1 plus 5 is 6. 6 squared is 36. Negative 11 plus 5 is negative 6. Negative 6 squared is positive 36. It works out perfectly. Let's try some more. Okay. If you feel like you want to try these problems without me going through each step, please go for it. Definitely, um, you know, pause your screen, see how you do, and then press play to see, uh, to catch up with me. All right, let's see how we do here. Definitely not a perfect square trinomial. Definitely not a perfect square trinomial. Step one, get the x squared plus bx to be by itself. So in order to do that, we would need to add 9 on both sides. So now we have x squared plus 8x equals 9. We need to make this a perfect square trinomial. So we look at the 8. Half of 8 is 4. 4 squared is 16. If I add 16 on one side of the equation, I need to add it to the other side of the equation. So now I have x squared plus 8x plus 16 equals 25. Now that this is a perfect square trinomial, I can factor it. This factored would be x plus 4 squared. What did we just learn is the opposite of squaring something. We take the square root. If we take the square root of one uh, side of the equation, we have to do it to the other. But now we're adding in that special symbol of the positive and negative square root of 25. The square root and the squared symbol simplify each other out. They're opposite operations. So we're left with x plus 4 equals plus or minus 5. We need to get x by itself, so we subtract 4. But notice when I subtract 4, I'm going to leave it in front of my expression. So it's negative 4 plus or minus that 5. Negative 4 plus 5 is 1. Negative 4 minus 5 is negative 9. That's it. Let's try this one. This is definitely not a perfect square trinomial. I need to get my x squared plus bx to be by itself, so let's subtract 12 first. I'm then left with x squared minus 6 equals 7. I look at this, I need to figure out my value for c. So half of negative 6 is negative 3. Negative 3 squared is 9. 9 would make it a perfect square trinomial. I have to add 9 on both sides. I then am left with x squared minus 6x plus 9 equals 16. I now need to factor this trinomial, which becomes x minus 3 squared. We now know to take undo the squared, we need to take the square root on both sides. And then plus or minus the square root of 16. Do not forget that step, guys. The square root and the squared simplify each other out. So I'm left with x minus 3 equals plus or minus 4. I need to get x by itself, so I would add 3. Just keep it in front of your expression. Do 3 plus 4 to get your first solution, which is 7. Do 3 minus 4 to get your second solution of negative 1. Awesome. Pretty good job. Okay. Now, the last two problems I have for us are a little bit trickier. They have an additional step, and that additional step is the fact that we don't just have x squared. We have a number in front. So anytime you have a number in front, a coefficient in front of your x squared that's not a 1, you always want to check to see, can you divide it out? Is there a GCF? And in this case, yeah. All of these numbers in this equation can be divided by 2. So we definitely want to do that first. If I can divide them all out, please do. We want it just to start with an x squared. So this equation now becomes x squared plus 6x plus 2 equals 5. And now it's business as usual. Subtract 2 on both sides. If you want to pause the screen right now before I give away all the steps, please do. Then x squared plus 6x plus 9 will make it a perfect square trinomial. I end up getting x squared plus 6x plus 9 equals 12. That factors out to x plus 3 squared equals 12. Take the square root on both sides. Now this is our first problem here where we can't actually take the square root of 12. We can't simplify it right now. Um, 12 is not a perfect square, so we're actually just, just going to leave it as the square root of 12. Notice we really haven't needed our calculators at all for these problems. So now this becomes x plus 3 equals the square plus or minus square root of 12. So x is equal to negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 12. And now I could go to my calculator now, or I could actually leave it as this answer. This would actually be an acceptable answer, but I could type in negative 3 plus the square root of 12. Decimal value-wise, I'd get 0.46 approximately. 
and then negative 3 minus the square root of 12 would give me approximately negative 6.46. Last problem here, all of these can divide by 4. And if I do that, I'll find with x squared minus 4x minus 3 equals 0. This is not a perfect square trinomial, so let me force it to become 1. Let's add 3 on both sides to get x squared minus 4x equals 3. Half of negative 4 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is positive 4. So I'm going to add 4 on both sides. x squared minus 4x plus 4 factored becomes x minus 2 squared. This is going to be, again, one of those situations where we go to take the square root on both sides, and we don't know the square root of 7, so we just leave it in that form. Square root and squared symbol simplify each other out. x minus 2 um, equals the plus or minus the square root of 7. Add 2 on both sides. This is a totally acceptable final answer, a way to represent that in radical form or grab a calculator. 2 plus radical 7 is about 4.65, and then 2 minus radical 7 would give us negative 0.65. I hope this video was helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching.